Hello! Today I'd like to review Autonauts vs Pirate Bots. It's a game where you program bots to automate your manufacturing infrastructure and craft an army to take on the Pirate Bots. Special thanks go to Curve Games and Denki for the review key. This review is based on about 30 hours of gameplay. All opinions are solely the authors. You're all busy people so let me answer your most pressing question first. Are you going to enjoy it? The 30 second spiel is that this game is about automating manufacturing. The game takes a unique bent on the genre by having you program bots by showing them how to do things. One bot is easy, but it becomes far more complex as you try to automate the entire infrastructure. You'll be attacked periodically by the power of bots and you gain research by taking out enemy outposts. It's intended to appeal to people who enjoy solving problems and take pleasure from seeing a well-run system. If that sounds like something you'd like, then stay with me and I'll delve deeper into the details. The premise of the game is that Pirobots have taken over our planet. It's up to you to defeat the pirates, rescue the colonists, and take back the world. In order to do that, you'll have to set up a manufacturing infrastructure to produce the materials and create an army of your own. It starts pretty simply, but as you progress in the game, crafting recipes will increase in complexity, and you'll need more and different types of material. You get research points by destroying pirate bots and structures. Capturing certain outposts will unlock new buildings. Doing both will give you new craftable items and recruitable soldiers. Destroying the boss's outposts and the boss will unlock new parts of the island. In turn, you'll find new enemy types and new blueprints to acquire in this new land. The game goes for a stylized, Lego-ish look and feel. The music and sound effects are going for a casual and cute atmosphere. But it would be misleading to think that that's all it offers. This game is best explained by the phrase, simple, yet not simplistic. Usually I don't comment on the visuals of a game unless there's something outstanding about it, and that's the case for this game. One of the things that impressed me when I tried the first game is how much care the developers took to provide visual feedback and streamline gameplay. One particularly nice touch is how items are stacked. Every item is placed at a slightly different angle, so even when there's a whole bunch of items, you can get the exact item you want. Another is how open containers show you what is contained and how full it is at a glance. You can tell that a lot of care was taken in providing visual feedback, and that in turn keeps gameplay a lot smoother than if you had to drill down menus to get to the details. The game follows on from the earlier Autonauts game, and some streamlining has happened. For example, the bots you start with are far more advanced than those you had in the previous game. You also don't have to worry about powering them up. Experience with the early game is helpful, but not necessary to play this follow-up. The centerpiece of the game is programming your bots. This is done by example. You press the record button on the bot and do whatever actions you wanted to do. Then you press play to have the bot follow those instructions. But you can also have the bot make decisions by adding conditions and loops. There's a variety of things you can check against, like if your bot has empty hands, which is helpful to check if their tool is broken. If containers are full, which is useful to make sure you're not overproducing. Combine that with loops and you can produce some pretty complex programs. So for example, take chopping down trees. It's trivial to tell the bot to use its axe on a tree. But what if your axe breaks? You can tell your bot to get a new one and go back to chopping down trees with a if hands empty condition, or even get it to craft its own axe. Programming one bot is pretty simple and accessible, but as I mentioned previously, the game is not simplistic. The complexity arises through the combination of robots doing their own tasks. Let's go back to that bot chopping down trees. It's going to puddle away chopping down trees, but eventually you'll run out of trees, so you'll want to plant some. That means another robot digging holes, and a second one collecting seeds and planting them so the forest can grow back. But logs lying on the ground aren't very useful, so you'll want a bot collecting and putting them into storage. Then there's the question of your axes and spades breaking, so you need to set up another entire manufacturing chain to dig up stones and collect sticks to produce tools. In total, you're looking at somewhere around 10 bots just to make sure that that single bot chopping down trees has the trees and tools to keep producing logs. Then you'll need bots producing planks and poles from those logs to further advance your industrial setup. That's just getting started in the game. Crafting becomes more complex as you progress, and recipes demand more and more inputs. Let's take bread. You sell cereals, seeds and products for gold, that you then use to recruit soldiers for your army. At the start you simply plant and harvest cereal crops and you can sell the straw and seeds directly for gold. But for more income, you have to progress onto porridge. That means clay pots and water. So you need to have a setup to mine clay, turn them into pots and bake them. For fresh water you need buckets that you produce from timber products. But clay and water are only found in specific places, so you have to ship tools and buckets 
and bring back pots and water to wherever you cook your porridge. For better efficiency, you'll want to use carts and wheeled barrels. That means setting up a vehicle crafting infrastructure. Wheels, axles and gears all have to be produced to get you carts and barrels. Then comes bread. You now need to grind the cereal into flour, combine it with porridge and bake it. Then you need to add butter. That means milk, so you need a dairy industry to house and feed cows. Things get complex very very quickly and that's fundamentally where the challenge in the game lies. But let's not forget the pirate bots. Combat is an integral part of the game because clearing pirate outposts is the only way to open up new parts of the island and advance your settlement. They usually sit in their outposts waiting for you to attack them, but you'll also have to deal with periodic raids. So you have to have defenses set up and soldiers on hand to deal with them. Repairs are done with wool that you get from colonists you rescue from the pirate outposts. Feeding the more advanced berry products gives you more wool. Your basic runs are fine early on, but as you explore more parts of the island, you'll need different types of soldiers. Structures need specialized demolition pots. Some enemies fly so you'll need archers. Some enemies are resistant to missiles. And of course, all the different soldier types require different weapons. And you'll have to set up manufacturing for those as well. Eventually, you have to craft trebuchets and cannons to deal with enemy fortifications. Taking the fight to the enemy involves directing your soldiers by setting up combat areas. The programs of combat bots are pretty simple and it effectively comes down to which side can put out more damage. The intent of the combat aspects of the game is to give a purpose to the gameplay. While I haven't played it extensively, the first game focused exclusively on manufacturing and it's true that it felt somewhat like it lacked purpose beyond just unlocking new things to craft. And obviously you can't simply make the same game as the original Autonauts with some tweaks so I can see what the developers were aiming for. However, personally I don't feel that the implementation of combat was the right approach. I expect that it's intended to appeal to more action-oriented players and it might well do that, but it also dilutes the focus of the game. Programming is a unique aspect and key selling point of this franchise, but the way combat is done doesn't involve programming at all. Maybe I missed it, but it seems that anything beyond just finding the nearest enemy or building and beating up on them is not beneficial. At the same time, the combat is too simplistic to appeal to players drawn to war games. It comes down to just maxing out your combat bots and throwing them against the enemy to whack each other until there's only one side left. One easy way to leverage the game's strengths would be to turn the situation around and make it about the player being attacked. Maybe a tower defense kind of scenario where waves of pirates attack you. At the moment you're under very little pressure to optimize your gold and wool production because the enemy is sitting back waiting for you to attack them. But if you had waves of enemies causing damage to buildings and destroying defensive structures, then that would give more drive to optimizing that side of manufacturing. More types of static weapons and ranged defenses would also involve your manufacturing base more than it currently does. A defensive scenario would also make the placement of walls, ditches and towers more important and allow the player's tactical imagination to maximize their efficiency by creating killing fields where different types of defenses have overlapping fields of fire and placing defenses as to encourage enemies into those fields. That's one scenario, but maintaining the focus on the programming and manufacturing aspects would play to the strength of the franchise. Autonauts vs Powerbots does very well in maintaining the strengths of the original Autonauts game by maintaining the bot programming and manufacturing aspects. Gameplay remains simple to access, but difficult to master. It does miss a bit when it comes to trying to extend the gameplay by adding combat, but that's not a game breaker by any means, and the game will continue to appeal to people who enjoyed the first one. If you enjoy games that let you show off your ability to optimize manufacturing, then this is a game that might be worth looking into. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.